All right, let's now go over some examples together. And I want you to recall what you have learned earlier. Two things. Number one, the formal definition for the asymptotic upper bound of uh, the big O notation. And number two, proposition number one of the big O notation, which is about how you can choose the multiplicative constant C and also the uh, starting point N0 in order for the upper bound effect to take place. Recall these two items before actually uh, before you actually go on together with me about the examples. And I got a series of mathematical functions for you to derive the its uh, asymptotic upper bound. But I would suggest stay away from the slides for now if you have, have already opened the slides. Stay away from that, only look at the video. And then I'm gonna switch to my iPad. I have, I have left all the answers blank because I want to develop every example answer from scratch together with you. I think that'll be the best for your learning. All right, for every one of them, I'll give you a chance to uh, pause the video. You can go ahead and sketch your answer and then uh, resume the video, okay? Let's see the first one. Okay, so this is the mathematical function over here. You can read it by yourself. What should be its uh, big O function over here? Okay, you can now pause the video. All right, assuming that you got your answer, let's check. The answer should be, well, first of all, according to proposition number one, the big O over here should just be the highest power. Power two, power one. Well, I should log in as we said before, because log in will actually grow much more slowly than uh, the count, uh, the linear uh, time function. That's, uh, so if you multiply n with log n, it's going to be strictly lower than power of two, right? That's something we said earlier. So two, less than two, one, and also zero. So the highest power should be two, all right? So the answer should be, according to proposition number one, should be big O of n squared. That's uh, part number one. And part number two, we want to prove it. So how do we prove it? By proposition number one, we have to choose uh, the C, and, uh, well, by the definition for the big O, no uh, big o notation, we have to choose uh, C and also n zero. So C should be uh, the multiplicative constant and also n0, right? So C will be, uh, according to proposition number one, the summation of uh, the absolute values for all the multiplicative constant. So we got five, we got three, we got two, and also we got five, right? So we got these uh, four numbers. So that'll be absolute value of five plus absolute value of three plus two plus and five. In this case, they all happen to be positive, right? So 8, 10, 15. So that'll be the C. And according to the theorem, it would be 1. Okay, but it's always good to double check. I'll let you do it. But one of the example I got has a little trick on that, but not this one. Okay, and according to uh, the uh, definition for the big O, so we should have the upper bound effects. We should have F of N should be less than or equal to the multiplicative constant 15 multiplied by n squared. And then, so this should be uh, for n larger than or equal to one. So this is definitely something you can double check to make sure this is the case. I'm gonna leave that check for you, okay? But this is gonna work, okay, for this particular one. So the answer should be n squared, okay? That one's pretty straightforward. Let's look at the, uh, example number two. For example number two, similar to what we had before, okay, I'll let you pause the video and think about the two things. Number one, what should be the big O part over here? Number two, what should be the corresponding C and also N0 to complete the proof? All right, you can now pause the video. All right, assuming that you did the exercise, let's take a look. And the highest power, not surprisingly, would just be three, right? You can see this part here and this part here multiplied together will be strictly less than two. So that's a uh, power of zero. So highest one should be three. So should be big O of n cube. So that should be the answer, part one. And part two, how do we choose C and also n zero? C should be the summation of absolute value for all these three. So 20 plus 10 plus and five. So that will be uh, 35 over here. All right. So that should be 35. What about N0? N0 in this case will also be one, okay? Again, I'm gonna let you double check the following, okay? You want to make sure F of N, which is exactly this formula over here, okay? Oh, sorry. This formula over here is 
actually less than or equal to the multiplicative constant, which is 35, multiplied by n cube over here for n larger than or equal to 1. Is this the case or not, right? That's also something you can also check. Maybe check a few numbers just to make sure this is indeed the case, okay? And of course, the answer is n to the power of 3. All right, so now we're done with the first two examples. So please make sure you did this exercise over here and also this exercise over here, right? It's really important to check a few numbers. All right, number three. What about this? Looks to be easier, but let's see. So this is the function over here, and now I want you to think about what should be the big O over here. All right, you can now pause the video. All right, assuming that you have done that, let's now take a look. Okay, well, what's the really the highest power? This basically is two times n to the power of zero. But now if you consider just a constant value versus log n, for sure, this is going to grow faster than n to the power of zero, right? You can think about it something like this. If you think about constant, it's more like this. This is more like a constant, like an n. And log n, it may not be exactly accurate, but it's going to grow still, even though it may be pretty slow, something like that. So this will be the log n, okay? Again, not exactly accurate, but you will see my point because the log n is going to grow faster, strictly faster than n. So that's why this should be the high, uh, the highest power. Okay. So the, uh, the answer should be big O of log n. And implicitly we assume it's actually base two. And how do we choose uh, for part two? How do we choose the uh, C and also N zero, right? According to proposition number one. So C should be the multiplicative constant uh, summation, right? Which would be three plus two, right? Three plus, don't forget always to put the absolute value because sometimes the multiplicative constant might be negative. So you don't want to forget to so make it natural to you. Always put uh, put the absolute values according to the uh, proposition. So that will be just five. And this will be N zero. According to the proposition, it should be one, right? And now, would that be it? Well, this is actually the trick uh, that I will actually mention to you, right? So the proposition actually uh, sometimes, uh, most for most of the time, it will actually work. But there's only some occasions where the n0 may not be exactly 1. So that's why you actually have to double check, okay? So why in this case n0 equals 1 is actually not right? Let's take a look. Let's try to uh, disprove it, right? If this is right, that means the upper bound effect should be happening right at this particular point. But is this the case? Let's take a look. So what I will do is I'm going to put it here. Okay. We want to uh, f of n, which is equal to three times log n plus two, right? By definition. And then we want to actually try one over here, right? What we want to do is to show that f of one is actually less than or equal to the multiplicative constant, which is five, five multiplied by the g of n. You can think about this is the g of n that we spoke about in the definition for big O. So uh, multiply by log n. Is this a case though? Let's see. So f of one, right? Let me plug in the number here. So now this f of one would be three times log one and then plus two, right? What would that be? Well, log one, right? Log one would just be zero, right? So this is actually something you're supposed to know, maybe from your calculus uh, class. It's a very, a uh, calculus course is a very basic one because two to the power of zero over here is actually equal to one, right? If you got any trouble understanding this particular math, please let me know. Otherwise, I assume you're actually okay with uh, this property. Of course, in this case, log with any base with one should be equal to zero, okay? So we know that the left-hand side over here is actually, over here, three times zero plus two. So this should be two. What about the right-hand side? Hopefully you can already see why it's actually not the case to actually for the upper bound effect to hold. And log in over here, and of course, uh, I forgot to actually replace this, okay? Because we are also supposed to 
uh, actually g of n, right? g of n uh, is going to be, uh, the n over here is going to be replaced by also one, right? The starting point over here, right? So this page should also be one. What's log one? Log one is going to be zero. Five times zero is actually going to be zero. And now two less than or equal to zero, is that the case? No, it is not the case, it's false. So this is not appropriate. So we should try something else. Well, why don't we try two? What if n zero is actually equal to two? What about two? Okay, if we put two over here, let's try to do something similar. So now we want to try to uh, uh, show f of two less than or equal to multiplicative constant is still five over here, multiplied by log. And so now the starting point is going to be, uh, rather than one, is actually going to be two, right? Two, right? And this part over here is gonna be three times log two plus two. And what's this part? Log two with base two is actually one, agree? Log two with base two should be one. That's also something very basic, okay? So this part over here, three times one plus two, which will be five, right? And what about this part over here? Log two is going to be one. Multiply by five is going to be five. So now we got five less than or equal to five is actually true. So this is where the upper bound effects will actually start to hold, right? That's why when you see the slides, I also show you also uh, uh, this, uh, this this proof in uh, organized in a slightly better way. That's something I would expect you to really write, uh, maybe in the test or in the exam. But hopefully this way of presenting is intuitive to you, right? What I'm trying to say is for proposition number one, it holds for almost all the time. But whenever you actually got lock, you gotta be careful over here because the proposition uh, itself does not really cover actually log. If you actually go back to the uh, uh, the definition for the proposition, we only talk about polynomial for n. So whenever you got log n, you can still use the proposition, but you have to always check to make sure the starting point over here is all, uh, is really right, right? That's why you gotta be careful. All right, so that's uh, good. And let's now look at uh, two more example quickly, right? All right, so this is uh, the the function over here, what should be the big O of? You can now pause the video. All right, so this one should be no trick, okay? So what's the highest power? So I would suggest to really consider this, you can think about two to the n plus two. By math, we know that it's going to be two to the power of two multiplied by two to the n, right? That's rather easy. So this part over here will just be four. So this is actually some multiplicative constant that we can drop. So what's the highest power? This one here, right? Two to the power of n. So that'll be the answer. Okay, and then how do we actually uh, prove it, right? To really prove it, I'll show to you uh, the same as before. We're gonna choose the constant c, and also we're gonna choose the n zero, right? So here we don't have any log involved. So eventually this one is gonna work. And then we actually got uh, the uh, what's the multiplica uh, multiplicative constant? That's the only one, which is four, right? You can see four goes before two to the power of n. In that case, it's going to be the absolute value over here, just one. Well, it's kind of redundant, but anyway, I'm trying to show to you how to apply the proposition. All right, so the answer should be uh, big O of two to, uh, two, to the, uh, two to the power of n is a uh, exponential uh, running time. And also to really prove it, you have to choose C being four and also N zero being one. That's uh, definitely the guaranteed way to work according to the proposition, all right? The final example here also involves log over here, right? Remember example number three over here, right? By applying the proposition may not necessarily work, right? Let's now take a look. Okay, take a look at this and then you can now pause the video and do it on your own. All right, assuming that you thought about it uh, and have done it, let's now take a look. What's the highest power? This part here is the, to the power of one. And this part over here, log n is, uh, is actually less than power of one. So it's gonna be constant. Oh, sorry, linear, I beg your pardon. I really meant to say linear because it's to the power of one. Sorry about that. 
So it's going to be n1. Okay, the highest power. Okay, of course you can just omit one over here if you wish. How do we prove it? To prove it, again we're going to choose the multiplicative constant c, which will be a uh, multiplicative constant one two here, and also one hundred over here. So that'll be two plus one hundred, which will be one hundred two. And what about the n zero? N zero over here. According to the proposition, it should be one. However, since we also got log in over here, which is not part of the definition for the uh, proposition number one, so it may work if we, uh, well, it may not work. So you now you gotta be careful. So now this will be the exercise I also want you to actually do to really make sure this one over here is actually okay. So the exercise is check if the Upper bounds effects starts to hold when n is equal to n zero, which is equal to one, right? And uh, more precisely, you want to plug in f of one, right? So this is f of n over here but you want to replace every occurrence of n by one should be less than or equal to the multiplicative constant 102 over here 102 multiplied by g of n which is n right so that's why you gotta uh really test right okay so that's about the five example i would like to go over with you if you go back to the slides over here you will actually see all the answers on the slides okay study them very carefully and then i think that's good enough uh, for us to move on because we have known uh, about how to uh, derive the big o from mathematical functions pretty well and that'll be the final part for this week i think we have running uh, we have be, uh, we have run out of time i don't want to go too much beyond that but for next week we're going to do something very exciting which is to really to connect from the mathematical derivation of the asymptotic upper bound I try to apply that into the context of java programming that's what we'll do next week all right stay tuned i'll see you next week